my name is Michael Weber, and I'm influenced by a bunch of music, stuff ranging from 50s blues and 60s garage and 70s punk and a little bit of soul and a little bit of folk and a little bit of psychedelia and a little bit of indie. And you put them all together, and that's what I do. I grew up in Silver Lake, Ohio, where I still live to this day. I went to Cauga Falls High School, and so Northeastern Ohio is a home to me, and the Akron area and the Cleveland area. It's all where I come from, and it's a place that I actually love. It's beautiful. And I have a recording studio in Hudson, so I have a lot of roots in the Northeastern Ohio place. It's my home. I'm very inspired by chaos. I'm inspired by uh, human interaction and being around people. If I can get in a room with five collaborators or just five people that create music or create art of some kind, I walk away from that writing something. And matter of fact, that's why the pandemic has been so difficult on me, is because I've lost that type of energy of going to a city and, and being in a chaotic environment or hanging around the studio with 10 friends that all have different creative projects, whether they're coding something or you know, writing a book or writing poetry or writing songs or creating symphonies. Whatever they do, I'm inspired by that. And that's what makes me want to write songs. The topic of the song doesn't even matter. It's just about the, getting me in the act of some type of musical seedling or lyrical seedling getting me, on, getting me started. I've been playing ever since I can remember. Matter of fact, I don't remember ever learning how to play guitar. It was just something that has always existed within me. My dad was a roadie for some bands back in the 80s, and my uncle has done it for 40 years by now. Uh, and what's happened in that amount of time is that there was always musical equipment that was laying around my house, so I just gravitated to it. You know, I had Stevie Ray Vaughan was playing on my VHS tape player, and I had those VHS tapes, and I never stopped watching him. You know, Jimi Hendrix, the guitar hero kind of guys, were the first people that I aspired to be like. So therefore, uh, I just learned how to play guitar from day one. And um, later on, around second grade, I started to play some drums. Probably around kindergarten or so, I played uh, piano. So then all those kind of pieces came together that made me be the multi-instrumentalist person that I am today. When I write a song, the first thing that comes to mind is usually some type of book. Uh, because otherwise, if I start with some, some elements from a verse, let's say I have a verse melody or something like that, what typically happens is I get so caught up in that and I can never find a way to finish it. So if I typically work backwards, if I start with some type of hook and then move away from that, it usually gets done, rather than me painting myself into a corner. Uh, in terms of production elements, I do a lot of stuff by myself. At least first, I always do it by myself. So therefore, I'll start with some type of battery percussion elements and then keep building melodic elements, some mid-range stuff like guitars and keyboards, finalize with vocals, and that's usually the first thing I do. If I don't like that, as usually I won't, then I'll keep recording that over and over again and or recording music in the diamond-shaped method of what I like to think, where you start with like a vocal and maybe like an acoustic guitar, then you keep adding percussion and stuff like that and bass frequency stuff. And then, once that's over, you scratch it and start recording again, but doing it in the opposite order, because now you know how the song goes. So then you'd start with percussion, and then move your way up to lead vocals and lead instruments. So, all that stuff together creates the process of me taking something from a seedling of an idea to a finished product of a song. Practicing songs with the band is not something that I have a whole lot of time to do usually, and so usually most of the time that it takes is not with the four of us looking at each other in the studio in each other's presence. Usually it all takes place in our head. And especially me trying to map out what I think everyone should play to try, try to make the sonic atmosphere work. Uh, it's kind of tough a lot of times because there's more to cover in an arrangement than four people can actually play. So. Trying to hash it out and practice the song more really isn't necessary. It's more about just trying to figure out what you're going to do. You know, especially from like keyboard perspectives, not every single song is a, a piano or a Hammond organ or something like that. There's a bunch of synthy kind of stuff that you have to figure out how you're going to do that. Especially when someone else, you know, you have the synthy thing, but there's also a piano part or something like that. 
and there's three guitar parts and acoustic guitar, nylon string, 12 string guitars and multiple different percussion elements laid on top of each other. You have to figure out how you're going to do that. So practice really isn't the issue, it's more about trying to decipher how it's going to be possible to create. My band, The Michael Weber Show, uh, which has grown over time and I'm, I'm very proud of where we've made it now as we're a bunch of early 20s guys that have a lot of passion and a lot of fire. So I'm happy about that. Um, I've pr I produce a band called The Shadows of Night who are best known for their 1966 smash hit Gloria. Uh, but now we have a new record coming out in November that I'm very excited about that I composed and played a lot of instruments on and produced. Um, and at my recording studio, the Lighthouse Recording Studio of Hudson, Ohio, I spend a lot of time producing different artists and uh, they come in and I do my best to try to give a direction to what their ideas are. Maybe it's something where they sit down at a piano and sing some idea to me and then I love collaborating with them and bringing their ideas into fruition, you know, that's kind of what I do, so. Yeah, this pandemic has been really, really tough on both my creative elements, my musical projects, because every single show has been canceled for seven months now, but also just psychologically. Uh, some people think that they can create a great album just out of, you know, strife inside their head. For me, that doesn't really work. I'm much more creative when I'm happy rather than when I'm just completely depressed. Depression kind of hurts that and um, I've been depressed and I think a lot of people have been depressed. Um, it's a very common feeling right now and it's very adversely affected my creative projects. However, I've trudged through it and I've created stuff and uh, I'm doing the best I can to keep moving forward and I'm, I'm excited about 2021 and I'm excited about the new songs that I've written and recorded in the last several months. And I also did a project called Porn Tunes which was designed to create an environment of people coming together and creating music together remotely. And so I did about nine episodes of that where we would take different musical genres, everything from recreating spaghetti western soundtracks to doing funk to doing um, nylon string guitar led Brazilian jazz and stuff like that. So I really tried to break out of my shell, do a lot of different stuff with a lot of cool people and make the most out of the pandemic, but that project has come and gone as we finished the first season of that, and now I'm waiting for the next idea to come to my head. There's plenty of ways you can find me. Just type in Michael Weber, Michael Weber Show Online, and you will come to many different places. YouTube, Michael Weber. You can find me anywhere. I'm ready to be found.